Hi guys, I'm Penny, a medicine woman and vitalist herbalist, specializing in ancient remedies for modern illness. If you'd like to learn more, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always here to help. Welcome to the real deal. Real people, real issues, real talk. And today we're talking cannabis education, business building, and marketing with Melissa Woods, also known as Canna Spirit Diamond Girl of Diamond Spirit Media. Melissa started her journey into the cannabis industry in Colorado, inspired by a loved one with cancer. She worked her way up from trimmer to bud tender to compliance officer to dispensary manager. She started her own cannabis education and consulting program online in 2017. She was appointed the head of educational outreach for Colorado. Started, oops, sorry, I had my alarm on. Let's see here. Started a cannabis marketing company called Diamond Spirit Media in 2018. She is now working on several lines of products, hosting auctions with international audiences, organizing events, getting a new project for artistic innovation started, and planning a live video podcast. Melissa loves being part of the cannabis education and training reaching out to the cannabis community and helping cannabis be recognized as the healing plant that it really is. And let's see, as we're waiting for her to pop on here, trying something different this time. So we'll see how it goes, guys. Um, I got sidetracked the other day when I was talking about Jack Hare's book, but um, something that keeps coming up that I do want to talk about since it is Cannabis Awareness Month still um, is, you know, when you're out there educating and talking cannabis with people, like use use the word cannabis. Try to please try to get away from the word marijuana because marijuana is derogatory and it was the start of all of the reefer madness and the cannabis plant deserves way more respect from 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 us than that. Um, it is the most complete food source on earth. It has 20 amino acids in it, nine of which our body can't produce naturally. We are symbiotic with the plant and the lies that have been going on for decades, um, they are just astronomical. You know, legalization is a fraud. Hi, Melissa. Let's see if I can get you in here. Oh, boy. Let me see. Bear with me, guys. One minute. Oh, Melissa, do you see a blue button that says join the live? I'm going to try this. Nope. Let's see, I'm trying, girl. You know, I don't know why Facebook likes to make this so difficult on me. Because... For some reason, I can't join you on. I'm trying. There should be something there that says join the Facebook Live or ask to join. Somewhere near the comments. So I can see you pop up. Let's see. I don't know, I just keep poking buttons. You're already here watching. 
Are you on your phone, Melissa? Because for some reason, when people are on their computers, it doesn't work. Um, maybe that's the issue. As you can tell, Melissa is a busy woman, guys, and she's done a lot, a lot for the cannabis community, and she is just getting started. Melissa, I have no idea why it won't let me bring you on. All I can do is invite. Okay, I think you actually popped up now, Melissa. I think there's just a lag time. You are coming. Let's see. Does it that in you? I really think there just might be a lag time and I get to um I think oh there you are. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there's a lag time. Tag time or something, and then I just get so worked up because I hate this stuff. Hi. Hey. <laughs> how are you doing? Good. Good. How are you? I'm good. Now that we're on, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Melissa. Um. Yeah. So I've started on my journey with cannabis in Colorado. I've been in the industry there strong. I started out as a trimmer. So I learned a lot about growing and from there went into actually what they call bud tending, which is kind of like more of the retail side of it. And from there, I actually got the opportunity. I dove into what they call compliance, which a lot of states have a compliance program, which is state regulated. Uh, it differs for every state. Colorado, though, I got, got into that and between the recreational and the medical rules, it's about a 500 page booklet, so it reads like stereo instructions. That's the most uh, difficult part of it. Yeah. But I, yeah. I immersed in that and I tra traveled across Colorado and did compliance for a lot of grows, a lot of dispensaries um, for a pre pretty well known brand called Strawberry Fields. And they were based off the song by the Beatles, the Strawberry Fields. Yeah. Uh, um, that's where. Yeah, I gained a lot of experience with that, especially. Um, really enjoyed that. I like to deal with uh, patients and also with everybody at the grows and the dispensaries. Um, made a lot of connections, a lot of networking, and then from there, um, I ran a lot. Ran a couple dispensaries. Um, there was a smaller company that had three dispensaries and one grow, and I went in between those and did compliance, but I mostly ran one of the locations um, in Durango, Colorado. And there, because I also have been involved with Colorado Normal, um, more from educational uh, perspective of being the head of educational outreach and just talk, talking to everybody, getting the information out about cannabis. Uh, there's so many people that have misinformation and then so many people that just don't know enough. Um, can't tell you how many times. Uh, we also sold CBD products. So there were so many people with you know, PTSD, um, a lot of veterans, a lot of older people that they just, they were against it because they just really didn't know anything about it. Um, yeah. So that, that was a big push for me, I guess personally, more than anything. Um, a, lot, a lot of the cannabis industry I guess the thing I don't like about it is they push so many sales and they push so much just selling the highest price products and they're not really focusing on quality, um, not really focusing on identifying what is effective. Um, you know, not everything works the same way for everybody. For me, 
I look at it as perspective of like with any type of medication because we don't all have the same dosage that works for everybody. Right. Um, there's different things that work for different ailments. So uh, for me, cannabis is just another thing. It's it's beautiful because I feel there's different strains that are they're perfect for some people and then they're not very good for others. So. Yeah. It's just like any other herb or, you know, plant or mushroom, you know, anything like that. So. Yeah, I just, I think that uh, there's such a stigma against it that people don't think about it like that. Yeah. And there's so many people that I talk to and then it, it's just like a, like a mind blown thing. Yeah. Then. So, um, I mean, really the more one on one, it's crazy because this has been going on for years as far as education that we're still having like feeling like we're at square one. Um, yes. But there's still so many people, like you said, that really don't know. So like those one-on-one -on -one conversations and events, I guess, you know, creating more community, which is what you're doing, you know, and I'm excited about your podcast, you know, just yeah. open it up even more with people talking, you know. Yeah, that's um, a lot of this year. I'm really excited because I want to connect with, when I was in Colorado, it felt like it was almost a click, um, you know. You yeah. Know, part of the cool kids because you're in the yeah. industry yeah. and um it shouldn't be like that it shouldn't no. be like that at all no. it should be community um that's really what i appreciate about you because community is where it's at um yeah. nobody no. should be excluded at all it shouldn't be and, any of that so. it's like that it's like that in every state anyway with you know the legalization because a certain few take it over and they kind of like you know everybody follows and, you know, um, there's so many other people that are not being recognized in the community, you know, but, you know, a lot of people are getting the accolades for what these people are doing. So, yeah, we're, we're bringing them out to light. And that's, that's what we need to do, really. That's all we, it's, it's going to be pretty simple to do, honestly, as long as we all start talking and communicating. Yeah, that's a big then, one. Yeah, and that's why, like, business building, marketing, that's what, you know, like you said, small business, being, you know, acknowledging small business and supporting them more than ever. Yeah, that's a lot of what uh, Diamond Spirit Media, my company, is about because there, there's, I can tell you, you know, anybody can say there's thousands of marketing companies out there, um, but with, I feel I make an impactful difference because it's more about community. It's more about, we're not going to survive. COVID showed how easy it is for businesses to shut down across yeah. every industry and how profit decreased, how it was just dangerous from employment standards, from just everybody in their life. And just, you know, wanting to be part of the community, wanting to, I like to call Diamond Spirit Media a brand building machine. Um, and it's yeah. it's towards really big brands. Yes, I would market that. But small businesses and connecting with those individuals and those business owners that, for one thing, if you're running a small business, you have so much you already have to do outside yeah. of marketing. So if somebody can help you with that, that's a big thing for me. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I took literally from my experience of, of running businesses, um, you know, I'm, I'm immersed with involving really everybody, not just industry professionals, but also people that are advocates. Um, yeah. I'm big on people that are actual patients, you know, even though somebody can't work the job because their health, I, I hate that they can't, but they yeah. know from a perspective what works, what brands are good. Um, there, there's people that do reviews on, even here I've seen on Facebook that mm -hmm. to me, those are more valuable than what the companies are branding things in, yeah. or the promotions they're running. And I think that it's sad that there's a lot of marketing companies that overlook all that. They don't think people are a commodity, commodity and they're value. We are not just numbers for you to push or to try to think for us. You need to have input from the people. So. And we've gotten away from that all the way around in the whole world. Haven't we? Yeah. That's not yeah, everything. You know, we're just getting to know each other. I love already you and Joanna. I just feel that energy from you too. And I'm glad we connected. I can't wait to 
meet you, but you, I mean, you're a bit, you're busy women and you have a lot on your plate. And it's, yeah, that, it's not that's really, I'm very um, compassionate and understanding with people. That's a lot of everything with business that I do and that Diamond Spirit Media that I love to represent because yeah, every, we're all busy. We all have so many things on our plate. Um, and if I'm, you know, working with the company and, and helping people, I'm big on cross promoting as well. There's a lot of brands like all across the U.S., Canada, some even overseas that um, I love to work with just because they're more of that mindset. Uh, we yeah. have enough of the big corporate mind. We need more people that want to work together. Yeah, and what you're doing is that's what we've needed. We've really needed someone to get all the, you know, get everyone together, networking, creating community and, you know, a good community without all the, like you said, the little clicky, clicky, click, click, you know, because uh, uh, we're not in high school anymore. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> I know that to me, it just blew my mind. And I've heard it. Yeah. Like you said, in other states, it's, it can be like that too. It's and it just everywhere. Cause I've yeah. been all around and it's, it's every state. It's you know, like I was talking to someone the other day and, you know, just reminiscing about like when cannabis first became legal in 2008 in Michigan or like even before. And, you know, like when we were all like, like just on the same level, not competing, not, you know what I mean? Not, not egos getting out of the way. It was so different. And boy, when you're in this industry with 10, 20 years with people, you know, a lot of true colors come out and it's it's a it's definitely a, a crazy industry to be in you know on top of, of like the fear of getting raided and everything else or going to jail because even though it's legal you, we all still face that in some way a lot of people are felons still a lot of people have PTSD like you can't take that away with legalization you know so it's crazy to me really I hope we keep fighting the fight and just don't stop where we are now, you know? Yes, yes. And then, like, some of the stuff you're talking about, there's some people, that's why they oppose legalization, because it's just so many, now that it is legal in places, they have so many rules. Some people are like, well, what's the point? Or yeah. even the, the way the taxes are. I mean, that, to me, we yeah. don't need to have such a tax structure on that, so... No, oh, and they don't need to take the very people that, that the industry was bred from out of the equation. Yes. You know, yes. I mean, it's just, I mean, we really, more than ever, it's what we're doing right, right, what we're doing now. It's time because um, we are going to get overrun just like tobacco did. You know, they took the tobacco herb and, and changed it into something that will kill you. And, and they're working that way, you know. That's why, like, save your seeds, like all the old strains, land race strains, save them seeds. Those are worth gold. Um, you know, with all the cross breeding stuff going on, if it's not done and with the knowledgeable background, you know, things can get out of control in that way, too. You know, they can. Yeah. Um, I had an interesting story. So during during COVID, I was managing the dispensary in Durango, and uh, we, thank goodness, because everybody, everybody everywhere was with COVID, was, you know, okay, businesses are, when the word came out, the businesses were going to have to shut down in a lot of states, and when it was ruled an essential business in Colorado, so I was able to work all through COVID, which was scary, at the same time, it was very illuminating for me, because um, I came up with, and it was really the the boom of Diamond Spirit Media. Uh, it's called a diamond tree. And it, what it is, this is like a little mini, maybe foot tall little tree uh, that looks, that has cannabis leaves. And it was the first, like a physical, tangible marketing tool. Um, and I still have, have them. They're still in dispensaries, uh, mostly in Colorado, just because that's where <laughs> I'm based from. Um, but there's some other states that have them. And they're specifically to be in dispensaries. And I had one in the dispensary I was running. And it was, you know, we already had a lot of people, you'd have a rush of people coming in because they're thinking COVID just really felt as close to the apocalypse for everybody as yeah. what we've had in a long time. 
So everybody was, you know, buying a lot and everything. But overall, we suffered, you know, everything. The whole economy had a big decline and surge when everybody started coming back. It, it, something we haven't seen in a long time. Uh, you know, there's really nothing that can compare to that in really any of our lifetimes. Yeah. Um, but during that time, I decided to come up with this marketing tree because it's something that was needed, like to set apart, like everybody was surging to the dispensaries in Colorado because they could, but to set apart from that so they would choose the dispensary that I had and the ones that had the tree. First of all, it was very visually engaging because it's who, who wouldn't want to look at a yeah. little cannabis tree? <laughs> so, um, but also I partnered with several companies. Uh, it was 50 plus actual product co companies in Colorado that they had different products like gummies, salves. Um, they even, I was even com one company that had can of guards that were uh, mm -hmm. two grams of concentrate and four grams of flour, which is some people smoked that on their own, but it was pretty much more a party thing, yeah. I would say. Um, but it was really cool because within the diamond tree, there were these little acrylic diamonds that would hang, and it was 12 leaves. And so, and we had it set at a price point, um, you know, so you're engaging somebody to purchase more. And it wasn't hard for people to reach that since everybody was buying products like crazy during COVID anyway. Um, but what they do is as they reach that price point, they get to go over to that tree and pick off a little diamond. Well, inside the diamond is a piece of paper that says, because in Colorado, every state has different regulations, but there you can get a product as a sample. You have to pay a penny, but just a penny, you know, who doesn't have a penny? Yeah. Um, so they would pick from that and they would open it up and yeah, there were prizes like a 10 pack of gum there were salves, there were Canagar, uh, the grand prize was an ounce for a penny. Wow. Um, yeah. And during that's that great time, idea. Yeah. yeah, during that time we went from, and because I got to see all the logistics and all the sales, we went from 30k that month to three over 300k. Wow. Yeah. So that was a big thing that I realized I was on the right track right. with the marketing. Right. <laughs> because you know, I was like, wow. And the owner to this day has it. Um, he got them for his other stores and there's other dispensaries, you know, they jumped on board with it. So it's, it, it's still something there's other designs. Um, that's just the first design. If anybody wants to check that out, that's I can send pictures or it's I do want to check it out. You should post it on my page at some point. I would love to check it out. Yeah, I've had that. And then I did a promotional video um, with Highland Health, which also is in, it's in Trinidad, Colorado. Um, the owner of that is a really great friend of mine. So we kind of did a little promotional video there for it that shows how it works and everything. Uh, but that's a big part of how I started with that and just showing how you can not only survive, but also succeed during COVID. Yeah. Um, that was, it was really fun. Um, there were so many people I talked to. Um, the lady that won the Canagar, so we took a picture of her and everything, and she's just like, my daughter is going to love this. And <laughs> we're like, well, shh, ma'am, you can't say that, okay? You you like this Canagar, right? You're going you're gonna to enjoy this, right? <laughs> but it was really fun with that. Um, and then it just set the stage, like, now we're finally getting to where we can have events. Um, you know, now it, it can be more community gathering so I'm working on more projects with that. Like you said, yeah. doing interviews. Um, you know, we have such a technological platform, all the social media yeah. um, and interviews, oh. everything. There's so much streaming that's available that you can actually put more about cannabis in it. So yeah. uh, I'm really going to, this year is going to be a big focus for that. There's just so much to learn, you know, like there there's is. so much learning, you know, but definitely worth the effort I, I feel so yeah and um so I was I've looked up I keep up with marketing statistics statistics sorry <laughs> that's a hard word sometimes <laughs> statistics uh, <laughs> but there's overall in the whole U.S. just marketing companies there's over 14,000 marketing companies wow <laughs> yeah which is very interesting but 
Um, so staying on top of that, I mean, and then businesses, um, just businesses in general, especially in the industry. I mean, there in Colorado, there's hundreds of dispensaries, just dispensaries alone in every state that's legalized. Right. So they really need to think about their marketing because, you know, you've got to make your voice heard. You've got to have that above others. And a big part of it too, I feel like, you know, people should, they should really check into what they have because there's, there's great dispensaries. Like I'd go, I'd just like to go to different cities and see what was out there. And sometimes I'd just be really disappointed with either the quality of the actual flower or uh, what gummies they had. And I'm just like, is anybody actually, you know, researching this? And it would be sad that, and then yeah. you have people that, I guess, I'd call it generic pleasantries. They just kind of, hi, how are you? And they, they give you what you want, but they don't really engage with you. Yeah. And yeah. it's just really important, I feel like, like in any business to um, have that personal experience with people. Yeah, I, I totally agree because, you know, like you said, there's 14,000. Why do they want to work with you? You know, I mean, there, there's a reason that, you know, someone will be drawn to you instead of the other, you know. But I feel like, you know, creating community, being real, you know, not, not with all these, like, bells and roses, you know what I mean? Like, that's what people want. They don't want to be hard sold and all this stuff anymore. Like, we've already been through the ringer. We're, you know what I mean? We're all kind yeah. of looking at things different nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, in running the dispensaries, there were all kinds of sales reps that I dealt with. So that was another way that I learned, you know, how to talk with people because <laughs> I hate to say it, but it was more like, I want to say, are you a car dealer? Because that's the kind of spiel you're giving me. And yeah, I don't always buy that car either. So. <laughs> and that's my thing with dispensaries too, you know, but the education has to get out there somewhere because like when you become a patient you're just thrown to the wind there's no and that's in every state that i've noticed like once it becomes legal well, you're on your own you know so like, like if we could have something to where people you know could go by you know because obviously we're going to have to create something on our own because no one's going to do anything to guide someone and you know networking like with your with what you're doing with spirit media um that's getting those people together to where they can network they can barter they can you know i mean so many things can come from those relationships yeah and there's there's a, a lot of people that don't know like when states are just becoming legal and they can actually rally at their capital or you know somehow get involved to have a voice in how their programs are developed right. because if they don't, it gets to me, it just, okay, well, they want to make money. That's what the state's about. So they're just going to make it a corporate thing. Yeah. And they're going to make all right. these rules. And it's not going to look at it as of the like reality of we need people setting those small amount of grams per day that you could get, or, um, you know, this small amount of plants or just so many rules that you're just like, and then people, when they either visit a state or they live in the state and they start participating, they realize, why is this like this? Well, unfortunately, you should have spoke up when they were starting because then you could have weighed in and it could yeah. be different. And it's not, we, not too late, though. It's just harder. It's harder to not go. Not too late, but yeah. we give up some right with legalization that weren't yeah. we didn't give up before. So, you know, people don't realize that. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not good, really. Yeah, it's harder to go back and then, you know, try to oppose it when it's already put in place. So. Michigan, they have every year, um, first Saturday of April, they have the hand, which has been, been a big event for years, and it started with John Sinclair, and actually John Lennon was there back in the day, you know, but... Um, I haven't even been to, to the Hash Bash since 2016 because it's now a big shit show of just, you know, it, it it's not the old time hippie yippie movement, you know, it's literally all the corporations and, you know, it's not, 
$10,000, $20,000 vendor booth and fees to get it in the hotel. Like, it's not what it used to be, like a hippie sit in and protest. So, like, that's where that's gearing to if we don't get involved, still, you know. And we, the Cheech and Chong day, the whole Cheech and Chong era needs to, I was saying earlier, like, I hate when people call it marijuana. You know what I mean? Because for me, it's just like so derogatory and the whole Cheech and Chong like effect where, you know, we're just a bunch of stoners. Like, look, look what you do. Look what, you know, other people do. Like, there's a lot of good things being done. We're not just sitting around on a couch, you know, in a super. So that's yeah. what needs to end. I mean, come on already. Yeah, I, I actually saw that, that whole version of stereotype and stigmatization when I was running the dispensaries because I got asked a lot that you smoke you actually and because I'm like well I don't know what you think anybody looks like that does this but it it shouldn't be about that right you know? it, it's it's you know and I'm like that we'll start right there because that, that's a great talking point yeah would, you know and you're like wow you know yeah I know a lot about it because for me, you know, I've told you that because my sister, I mean, she has cancer. She's had cancer a lot of her life. And it, it was, it's been a very big inspiration for me just to get into the industry. Um, I was actually born in North Carolina and there it's a huge, huge Bible belt. And it just, I was taught everything, the whole devil's lettuce and <laughs> the, yeah. I mean, every, everything is always pot or marijuana or, you know, everything like that. And um, you're going to go to hell because you do that. And um, <laughs> I, it, it took a lot for me to break away from that mentality, but a lot of it was really, you know, when, when you see somebody and it's not just cancer, but for me seeing somebody with cancer and what chemo, what, what radiation, what, um, you know, different, they, they test, they do all these tests, they check everything and you see, because a lot of times, you know, they call it the slow death, but it, yeah. the weight loss and the, 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 just the fatigue you see on somebody. And, but then with cannabis, I mean, and, and in every case, like some people want to argue against cannabis. Well, it's not a cure all. No, it's not a cure yeah. all, but I would rather somebody have more pain relief, less side effects and quality of life yeah. over quantity. I mean, what's the point, all big pharma and everything? Yeah, they may live, who knows how much longer anybody really is going to live anyway. Yeah. But if they just have more quality, that's really what brought me on board with it. So. Yeah. When you see it firsthand, there's no way to turn your, your cheek back, you know, and, and want to spread the word. The problem mm -hmm. is, like we've you know, you would think when people know how good of it is and what it really does that we wouldn't be still running in circles all these years, you know, because, you know, we're fighting a machine, like, it, you know, the medical industrial complex runs deep through insurance, you know, doctors, machinery, pharmacy, you know, like, imagine if that, if that monster got shut down a little bit. And, yeah. and, and they're already feeling the crunch a little bit, but they have to get it another way with legalization, you know. That's why they're, you know, now there's people in jail and they're getting money both ways now. What a great business model. You get them, you, you send them to jail or you get them this way, you know. I mean, really, uh, how genius is that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. At, you know, at, at our expense, though, at our expense, so. Um. Yeah, it is. It, it's just everything. And times, I don't know, COVID taught me, I feel like a lot of people now, our eyes are wide open. And I know that's not the worst thing that can happen. Yeah. And I just, it's just time to, it's time to wake up. It's time to, it's not, not designed for us. It's designed for them to always stay over us and to always keep us in control. And when we can break away from that and unite, that's a big thing for me too. Yeah. Like community yeah. is part of that. It start, you know, because I mean, there's people that are difficult to deal with. There's people that have different opinions, but until people have those hard conversations yeah. and you get about 
okay, well, if, whether you agree with me or not, you know, let's talk about this. Let's, let's have these, like you're saying, hard conversations and yeah. let's try to work towards something together because there's more of us than there are of them. So. Yeah. I mean, we, I mean, yeah. And, and, and you know, it's not going to be done from within the system, you know, like for all the Trump people, like he knew how to go in and fire people. Obviously he couldn't because he would have wiped the slate clean, I'm sure. So like, you know, it's all just like, it's going to only come from the people. Uh, and yeah. you know, I'm Greek, so I grew up with really strong culture and, you know, um, real deep in my roots and I you know married an American for 25 years but I always thought to myself like what is the, the culture what is the American culture like football and hot dogs like we have no culture we have no community you know and and it's not really only a cannabis community like we're building a community of good people you know, people that really, really do care because we're out there, you know, we are out there far few between, but, you know, um, people need to see that good things are going in in the world because we are just bombarded by all this fear mongering and stress, you know, people don't know which way to turn half the time. They're on that, you know, guinea pig deal too. They, they're working just to survive. We're all in survival mode. How can you yeah. think? in survival mode, you know. Yeah, that's the truth, yeah. I've been there too, and you know, the younger you are, the harder it is too. That's why I really like educating, the, you know, starting with the kids because, you know, even like 60s, you know, the older people, we can educate them, but a lot of them are stuck in their ways still, so there's only so much you can do, but the younger generations is where it's at. Yeah. I just, I think also, you know, compassion goes a long way. I know, you know, it's, it's compassionate. Like, like you said, it, it's, that's what I like to do though. I like, cause when, when I work with dispensaries or, you know, training people, helping educate people, it's so enjoyable to me. If somebody actually asks questions and they actually, if they want to oppose it, or even if they get a little bit of an attitude, cause you're like, okay, this is, you know, it, it just, it builds character and it strengthens everything. And um, it just, it it's it's really, I like the complexity of it. I, like I do. The, I, mean, the, the, honestly, I, I mean, how fun would it be if someone just agreed with you 24-7? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Life wouldn't be too interesting, right? Yeah, because that's what, I don't think some people think about that. And I'm like, yeah. if everybody agreed with everything, we all saw it from the same way. For one right. thing, it'd be really boring, and I don't feel even great ideas would come about at that no. point because it almost oh. is like a collective mind. Do you really want to be in that? So, I mean, we all have our very own journeys we're taking. We all have our very own gifts. We all just, you know, a lot of those gifts and talents were somehow drenched in indoctrination for school. You know, so now that we're getting older, we, we need to do a lot of more self-reflection and, you know, um, just critical thinking because, um, you know, the way everything is just so fast-paced nowadays, everybody's, you know, always go, 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 but when you sit there and you just, you know, breathe and, and can meditate and, and find out who you are, it, just, it affects you. So much spirituality, and a lot of people never even tune into that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's there's a push for technology, and it helps a lot because I mean, like social media is a tool now yeah. that people utilize. Mm -hmm. The thing is, though, it's only as good as you know using it. Like if you're using it to the maximum capacity, um, and like you know this video, like live going live and stuff. I have problems with that still myself, but yeah. there's technology is only as good as the right. way you use it. Uh, that's something with Diamond Spirit Media too. I, you know, with that and my team, we try to provide uh, the best engagement. Um, we have, you know, different trades, like a recipe, if you will, to, to help right. brands build because, you know, a lot of people, oh, well, why choose, why choose any marketing company? 
well because if they know you know more of how to utilize the tools especially social media being a really big one um, then why not because it's social media and i when it first started i really didn't know you know i, was like, I don't know if this is going to take off i don't know if it's you know what does it do well now it's almost like what it does it not do right. um, but right. it's right. it's like its own job in itself so <laughs> Well, I mean, I know, like, with, I mean, at one point I had 30, 13 businesses, but I've been a business woman my whole life, in fact, you know, to, to ad advertise, run ads, it costs thousands of dollars. I mean, we have yeah. free, like we're talking here, it's free. we might have some technical difficulties, but, you know, it's a very, very powerful tool because people are on it. You know, it's good. Like, I would have never thought that I'd ever be doing Facebook Live doing this. Never. You know, never in, in my life. I've been hiding for 10 years, you know. Um, but, I mean, it, it's amazing that we might as well use this technology for our own good because either that or we're going to get outnumbered by it. one of the two, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, so with, with the marketing and everything, because I know you were saying, and you, you said 13 businesses? At one, one point I did. I've been a businesswoman. I was on my, I ran away from home when I was 14, and I've kind of lived a hard life. But I, I've always, when I was younger, I worked, you know, a couple of waitressing jobs and uh, one office job. But I've, I started a cleaning company. That was my main thing for 25 years. And then who would have, you know, it's pretty sad when someone that scrubs toilets for a living is helping to heal people, you know, because I mean, seriously, how, how does that even work? Because I, you know, like I never started doing this, it just kind of happened through the year, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I feel like a lot of people that that happens where they, they, you know, we, we have to pay our bills, we have to work, but then what we're really passionate about, it's like it gradually comes into focus and then you know as you age right yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah. that's what it is you know but I, I mean honestly you know mine came through, through the whole illegal era and stuff like that but i you know i just i even cleaning you know because i a lot of my customers were suffering i'm just just really sick of the suffering after all these years yeah. seeing people suffer for you know you can help or or, you know, because of the stigma, even though you can help them and they know it, they're still afraid and go the other way. And, you, you know, they end up being hurt. And, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to see that happening all over the place. Yeah. And then I know I encountered it would be just a one bad experience. Just the one bad experience would just somebody would turn, turn completely away from, from considering cannabis again. Um, I happily and glad and gratefully helped contribute to that being turned around a few times but yeah and it was it was through more it was information it was education it was um taking the time and you know having the patience um that's a lot, a lot of what diamond spirit media was based off of too because um you know there were some people that i mean if if you've never experienced cannabis then it is it is psychoactive you know a lot of people can spend things whatever way they want to but if you for me for example when i first started using cannabis i didn't know what to expect because i'm a person that likes a lot of control <laughs> especially how my body feels yeah and well. i had to learn to, to let go of some of that so that because i've had acid reflux i've had toothaches i've had you know a lot of different things that cannabis has helped with and if i didn't open my mind and let it do what it needs to do as the plant that it is and enjoy some of the feeling that it gives you um, without partaking to the extreme because some people have that horrible edible experience where they get what they feel is too high and yeah, yeah it's a very yeah. overwhelming experience and then turns you completely away from it. Um, but but you know it, that even with the psychoactive part or the too high part because I mean I've smoke since I was 12, you know, daily, but, and I've also had a stint where I've gotten into drugs, 
a state where I've gotten into drinking, not really pills, but when I had a problem, I was on Ativan for a month and a half and don't remember a month of my life. And I've been drunk where I didn't know what the heck was going on. You know, but I, I have never had that problem with cannabis, you know, so like the whole, it's crazy, like that cycle, you know, like it, it, just like doing um, psilocybin mushrooms, you know, because I'm a big advocate for those for microdosing, not like getting all, all wasted, but like I found that cluster headache, it's the only thing that actually touches cluster headache. Um, and it worked really well pretty quickly. Um, and, and I stunned one of them, but you know, if you have cluster headaches, you're, you're lied up in the fetal position and can't move. And that's no way to live, you know? Um, so there are, you know, so many things that we could be doing and, you know, other herbs, plants, all kinds of stuff. It's not just cannabis. And that's why I'm into everything else too, because cannabis is a good, THC will go in and kill the bad cells instantly, and stop it from masturbating, you know, and build new cells, but you, everyone's different. So you might need different things on top of it, you know. And the medical industry has its place. They just, you know, they don't have, they have profit in mind before they have, you know, helping you feel better. And that's really not, not you know, it's honestly, it's criminal. It's criminal. Yeah. They're, it, you do no harm to others, you know, I'm not a big Bible pusher, but I know do no harm to others. And, you know, it's literally premeditated harm, really. I mean, yeah. you're, you're trusting these people with your life and you're yeah. scared when you get told you have cancer or this one or that one, like it's scary. I don't care what age you are, your soul is always gone. You know? Yeah. And we all are, should be valued and we all should be not taken for granted. It's just a paycheck or money to get collect off of us. So. Yeah. Um, I, it's crazy to me too. The, the, you see all the commercials, you know, they have for whatever high blood pressure, diabetes, whatever it is. And then they have all, all that fine print of this may cause da, 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 da. And there's so many that cause the same side effects. If you don't watch out of what it's trying to help with <laughs> and then you're just like well what's the point of me even taking this because i don't i have that or, or it could be even worse you know because some of you would say in some cases death and i'm like why do i want to take something where i run the risk of that <laughs> yeah i mean and you know the doctors like they learn symptom symptom and diagnosis like they're not that and and those pharmaceutical drugs actually like slow Slowly, they have long-term side effects, even more than the ones that are now. But any natural medicine, including cannabis, any natural remedy, it's not, not masking symptoms. It's literally healing and repairing. Sometimes, you know, I mean, I've given people one gummy that never needed nothing else. I've had one person take one microdose of mushrooms, never needed nothing else. So everyone's different. Like it literally literally took away two years of pain, you know, but you know, other people, I'm not saying it works like that for everyone, but everyone is different. So it doesn't take much sometimes either. Yeah, and so with these comp, I mean, cause you have a myriad to pick from for cannabis. Um, and it's funny too, cause they, they've tried to make some progress with mushrooms for Colorado as well, but people, from like different states even used to come in and, and I don't know where they got the idea, but they thought that we had mushrooms in the dispensaries, the cannabis dispensaries too. And I'm like, we're not there yet. We're not there yeah. yet, but um, it'd be really cool if that comes about too. Um, yeah. There's so, there's so many dispensaries and so much out there for the cannabis industry. Uh, you know, a lot of people are like, why is the marketing even important in the first place? And it, it is because it's growing so rapidly. It's, it's yeah. crucial for businesses to stand out from the competition. Um, you know, more and more states are legalizing all the time. Some start with the medical and go into recreational. Some do it all at the same time. Some just stay with the medical program for, you know, many years. Um, but it's, it's crowded with new players. And then you have the companies that have been there. And then you have, you know, you have everybody in the mix. So it's essential 
for companies to differentiate themselves. And that's a lot of what I try to provide. Um, we just started like, I want to say halfway through the year last year, I started with hosting auctions as well for Diamond Spirit Media. Um, I'm doing that this year as well. Uh, just adding all those other things, like I said, events, the podcast, uh, more community involvement, but the auctions is a really good uh, opportunity too. So anybody you know out there with with a brand, whether you're new, whether you whether you've been in it for quite a while, uh, Diamond Spirit Media is definitely a company you should reach out to and get in touch. Uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. It's Diamond Spirit Media LLC. Um, the website the website I have is under construction right now. Um, I started it at the beginning. And for the time, it looked really good, but now things have changed, you know, technology, there's way better ways to have your website organized, so I'm working on that. Um, so I don't really want people to go to that at this time because it's not very good, so, but uh, working on that. So, but yeah, it's really great talking to you, though. It's really, I feel like we've covered so much in this conversation. We there's, really did, you know, I think so, too. It's really, it's and I definitely, really, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's just really enjoyable to talk to somebody that's like minded. So, yeah, it is. I, I look forward to meeting you guys, and I, I'm glad that we've connected. And um, I'm glad you re reached out to me. And I, I know it's for a reason bigger than we are. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. So, but we'll have you back on in the future too, because we have a lot more to talk about. And um, did you have, have that event? Did you already schedule so that the, event? The event, um, the the one that I have right now is scheduled for July eighth and ninth. Um, I don't have any other ones yet. I'm still working like all the organization for that event, so I don't want to talk about too much detail with okay. it. But it's it's definitely we'll get back on. we'll get back with you closer to it that way we can get out some details for people on that and um so thanks for joining us everyone chime in we'd love to hear from you join us here live every Monday Wednesday and Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard and next we will be talking cannabis and hemp with Brian Fogg so stay tuned see you later Melissa have a good day. Bye. Bye.